Okay, last video for D03, one-dimensional friction. Okay, we're going to cover number seven and eight. Number nine is going to be bonus, and it's going to be on your own. So if you decide that you want to do number nine, you're on your own. For number seven and eight, I'm going to get you going, but I want you to basically uh, work through it after I help you get it set up. So for number seven, it says the coefficient of kinetic friction between a 35-kilogram crate and the floor is 0 0.30. A, what is the horizontal force required to move the crate at a steady speed across the floor? B, what is the horizontal force required if the uh, coefficient of kinetic friction is zero? So in other words, once it gets going, if that coefficient of kinetic friction goes to zero, what is the horizontal force required uh, after it's already in motion. We'll discuss that in just a minute. So let's go ahead and draw our force diagram. That's one of the things that I will help you out with. So we've got a 35 kilogram crate, okay, which means that we have a force of gravity down here. We have an equal and opposite normal force. Okay, we have an applied force. And we have a force of friction. Okay. So in order to figure out the first part for number 7A, so the steps for 7A are that we need to first take a look and figure out what is the horizontal force required at a steady speed. So steady speed means what? So if we have constant speed, okay, constant speed or constant velocity, that means that our acceleration is zero. Okay, so that's one critical piece of information there. Our acceleration is zero. Okay. Now, if our acceleration is zero, so if our acceleration is zero, that means that the applied force must be basically equal to the force of friction because we have no acceleration. So the force of friction and the applied force are the same. Okay. So all we need to do is figure out the normal force, okay, so find the normal force using our equation, negative mass times our acceleration due to gravity. Okay. Once we find that normal force, then we can figure out the force of friction by just taking our coefficient of friction, which is 0 0.30, our coefficient of friction times that normal force that we just found. Okay, so once we get that horizontal force, the or the for, once we get the force of friction, we know that that's the force that's required to move the crate. Okay, B. What is what horizontal force is required if the coefficient of kinetic friction is zero. So in other words, if the coefficient of kinetic friction is zero, what is the horizontal force required to then keep it in motion? Okay. So this is more of a theoretical question. Once that coefficient of friction goes to zero, so what is the applied force required? Remember the applied force force of friction we said are going to be the same. So in order to figure out the force of friction, we just take our coefficient of friction, which we just said was zero, times the normal force. Well, you already found the normal force in the first part, so you're just going to plug that in over here and then multiply it by zero. And that will give you your force of friction, which is the same as your applied force. And if 
you can't figure out what zero times whatever the normal force is, then I don't think I can help you out very much. All right, last one. No more jokes, I promise. Okay, so number eight, a 20 kilogram mass is pulled, pulled by, <laughs> that should just be pulled along a surface. We don't need to say by. Okay, so a 20 kilogram mass is pulled along a surface by a horizontal force of 128 newtons. The coefficient of friction is 0 0.52. What is the acceleration of the mass? So in order to figure out the acceleration, we need to get our net force because our net force is equal to mass times acceleration. We know the mass. The mass is equal to 20.0 kilograms. So we need to find the net force. All right, so let's go ahead and draw our force diagram. So we have a force of friction. We have an applied force. Normal force and force of gravity. We know that it is 20 point zero kilograms. We know that the applied force is equal to 128 newtons. And we know that the coefficient of friction is 0 0.52. Okay, So we have enough information, but it's going to take us a little bit to get there. Remember that the other thing that we know about our net force is net force is equal to the force of friction plus the applied force. Okay, It's accelerating, so we don't know, or we, we know that they're not the same. We know that our applied force is greater than our force of friction. So in order to figure out our force of friction, have to take our coefficient of friction and multiply that by the normal force. And then in order to find the normal force, remember that's the negative mass times the acceleration due to gravity. So working our way backwards, we first need to find the normal force, which we can then plug in here and find the frictional force. Find the force of friction, plug that in here. Okay, We were given the applied force. The applied force is the 128 newtons, and that will give us our net force. And then we take the net force, plug that in here. We were given that it was a 20 kilogram mass. So finally, to get to A, we need to take our F net and divide by the mass. Okay. Once again, number nine is bonus. So that one's completely on your own. I've just set up number seven and eight for you. And you get to fill in the blanks and calculate it.